We recently did a video on a glow betta, and in that video, we asked for your opinions on genetically modified fish in the comment section, and that comment section had a lot of comments. So in this video, what I wanna do is I wanna talk about where do we draw the line as fish keepers? Is it genetically modifying fish? Is it hybridizing fish? Is it selectively breeding fish for certain traits, or do we want to go completely natural in our fish tanks? That's what we're gonna do in this video. I hope you enjoy it. Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics, and in this video I do wanna talk about the differences, the advantages and disadvantages of genetically modifying fish, hybridization, and selectively breeding for certain traits. So let's start with the GMOs. With the genetically modified organisms, we're talking about inserting a gene into a fish, such as the glow betta, or the tiger barbs, or the glow daniels, or now they've got glow rainbow sharks. And in this particular instance, the main purpose is to insert genes that allow the fish to glow under certain types of visible light. Now we talked about in the last video that GMO in general can be a good thing, especially as it pertains to crops. You can feed a lot more people for a lot less money by genetically modifying some of these crops. Now of course there could be some downsides to that as well, but at least as it pertains to fish keeping, when we are genetically modifying these organisms today, it's really about the aesthetics. So I guess the main point when it comes to genetically modified organisms is yes, you're producing something that simply doesn't look natural and we might not fully appreciate the downsides in terms of the health of the fish long term. But let's talk about some of the other mechanisms we human beings use to modify fish. The next one would be hybridization. Now, while a lot of people feel very strongly about GMOs and not ever doing that, the hybridization gets a little muddier. So what happens when you keep multiple fish in a fish tank and they produce a hybrid? This can happen quite frequently. And in fact, some of the fish that are on the market are due to hybridization. So I'm thinking about the blood parrot, the flower horn. These fish can be very, very popular. And they're actually a, a mix of other fish. African peacocks would be another one. In our own fish room, we have OB cichlids that I think are some of the prettiest cichlids we have in our fish room. And they're actually a mix between red empress cichlids and dragon bloods. And so in that particular instance, we've hybridized a fish, but they're really pretty. People like them. It gets them into the hobby. I have seen some really pretty peacocks that have been hybridized. But for that, again, there's some big time disadvantages. One, as fish keepers, a lot of people feel, especially as it pertains to cichlids, we should be keeping our fish purebred as they look in nature, as they breed in nature. And so there are a lot of purists out there that say we should not be hybridizing fish. Let's keep them pure as they would appear in nature. Now, in nature, hybridization does happen. In fact, at the OCA this year, the Ohio Cichlid Association Extravaganza, Ad Konings, who's one of the leaders in cichlid research, actually went through Lake Tanganyika, and he found, and his team has found from time to time, there are hybrid zones there. Hybrid zones actually exist in nature. To say that they're completely unnatural, that's not true. Now, to say that some of the things that we do in the aquarium hobby in hybridizing is unnatural, yes, those things might not necessarily happen in nature. The big question is, is it okay to allow that to happen in the fish keeping hobby? And even for myself, I'm not 100% consistently clear on this. So when it comes to peacocks, I don't mind seeing what the peacocks are gonna produce in terms of hybrids. But when it comes to things like my shell dwellers and all my Lake Tanganyikan fish, I try to keep those things separate. If there's any chance of hybridization, I make sure to never pull those fry out of the tank. They're going to stay in that tank. They're gonna live in that tank. They're gonna die in that tank. And I'm not pulling fish out of there to sell at swaps and auctions. So even for myself, sometimes the, hybridiz the hybridization side of things, it's not 100% consistent. But I wanna hear from you, are hybrids okay? Is it okay to have them in the fish keeping hobby? Is it okay to sell them in the fish keeping hobby as long as people know what it is they're buying? Now you could also make an argument that some of the hybrids might actually be even healthier than some of the purebred strains and there's a very good reason for that. If you think about what we've done in the aquarium hobby for many, many, many years, decades if not centuries, and that is selective breeding. And in my mind, this may actually be one of the most damaging things you can do in the fish keeping hobby if you are not constantly introducing new stock into those lines. There are lots and lots of examples. In fact, a lot of the fish that we keep in the aquarium hobby are due to generational selective breeding over time for many, many years. So examples, almost all of our live bearers, our guppies, our platies, our mollies, our sword tails, 
most of the fish that you would find in the aquarium hobby you would never find in nature. Over time, they've been selectively bred for more colorful tails or different tail types or finnage or colorful bodies. And when you do that, when you selectively breed fish for certain traits over time, that can introduce genetic mutations over time. And in fact, we see a lot of that, especially with guppies and certainly bettas. Most of the colorful bettas that you see in the hobby with the nice fins, well, you would never find those things in nature. Bettas in nature tend not to look nearly as colorful. The fins aren't nearly as long. We have selectively bred those fish over time for the traits that we find physically desirable. Understand that when we are doing fish keeping and selectively breeding, the number one goal for the vast majority of fish keepers is to introduce a physical characteristic or enhance a physical characteristic that is appealing to look at. Not necessarily is this fish going to live an extra six months or a year. This is especially true in the cichlid hobby as well. People who are selectively breeding the fish to bring out the best colors. The question for us is when we're selectively breeding, especially if we're not introducing new genes from other populations of those fish, are we doing more harm than good? Now, of course, responsible breeders are constantly trying to introduce new genetics into their lines from other parts of the country or other parts of the world, or occasionally introducing wild type strains to keep their lines healthy and to reduce the likelihood that genetic mutations are going to accumulate in their populations over time. The big question is where do we draw the line? Is it GMO? And would you draw that same line if the genetically modified organism had inserted genes that allowed it to be healthier? to live a little bit longer. Or maybe you draw the line at hybridization, maybe it's something you should never have in the hobby. Or maybe it is selectively breeding over time that could potentially introduce genetic abnormalities. Even for myself, I'm not 100% consistent there. The genetically modified organisms for aesthetics, I'm not really someone who, who likes that sort of thing. Hybridization, I am relatively inconsistent and I recognize that. So for instance, with my peacocks, sometimes I find it interesting to see what kind of color combinations are going to occur. But for my Lake Tanganyikan fish, my shell dwellers, Cipachromus, I would never want to cross those things. For the selective breeding, I think almost everybody does it, including myself. But again, very, very important to constantly introduce new genes into those populations. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your comment down in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next one.